हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड लर्न टू लीड दिस इज आशू एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ फिफ्टींथ ऑफ जुलाई 2021 वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल एंड यू कैन सी टू बेस्ट इमेजेस ऑफ द डे बट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स बट गाइस यू कैन डाउनलोड अर एप्लीकेशन दैट इज करियर्स क्लाउड एंड द लिंक ऑफ दिस एप्लीकेशन इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर ईमेल आईडी एंड आफ्टर दैट यू कैन क्लिक ऑन दिस क्रैक करंट अफेयर सेक्शन फॉर सब्सक्राइब Uh, our current fares like one year as well as for two year. Both the current fares subscription is very much low. If you see the price, you will definitely surprise. And guys, remember we are covering ninety to ninety five percent of those current fares which can come in your exam. This is the genuinity. This is the hard work of Affairs Cloud team. But how we are covering this current fare? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section, we are providing you three sections. One is detailed current fare, question and answer format, and the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on daily basis. next is the weekly again you will receive three things one is detailed current fair question and answer format and the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on weekly basis but the most important section is the monthly and we are providing four type of pdfs detailed current fair question and answer format of current fair best 100 current fairs that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket pdf it means two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise the current fair in quick format but guys we are also providing topic wise current fair to enhance your performance we are covering 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam it means if you want to cover one topic related all news just from single pdf then you can use this type of pdfs and if you are a banking aspirant then we are providing three things detail and the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy and the quiz section that is also related to banking and economy and you can attempt this quiz on monthly basis on our application If you want to revise all the past current fair just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are also providing detailed budget and economic survey, and we are also providing expected question and answer only related to budget and economic survey. State current fairs also will be provided, and to, it is uh, to enhance your state performance. And we are covering every state and union territory. So, guys, all these things. comes under just one subscription you have to just download our application careers cloud and you can log in with your email id and after that you can click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe these current fairs for one year as well as for two year both the subscription prices are very much low but on that minimal price we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ash10 and if you have any query you can email us on this email id or you can contact us on this number So let's start today's current fair that is 15th of July 2021 but first of all you have to like this video you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe our channel by providing these three things you are basically motivating us and guys remember you can join our telegram group from the description box link so let's today session with the most important questions and here is the first question NTPC National Thermal Power Corporation Renewable Energy Limited will set up India's single largest solar park in which state so guys this question is the most important and the keyword here is the single largest solar park in India and it will be established in which state it will be established in run of kutch area it means i am talking about which state i am talking about gujarat so answer of this question is a and guys remember ntpc renewable energy is 100% subsidiary of national thermal power corporation limited and this organization has received an approval from ministry of new and renewable energy to set up india single largest solar park and total capacity of this park is so much like you can see here total capacity is 4750 megawatt it means 4750 megawatt and it will be established exact area is run of kutch examiner can ask this area and the district is khavda uh, uh, in gujarat khavda in gujarat and specially for the gujarat students you have to remember it is in the khavda or the khavda district of gujarat and the project will be almost twice the capacity of the uh, bahadla solar park in rajasthan currently the largest single location solar power project in the country so now it is bahadla solar park which is the you can say uh, highest capacity solar power plant in india and it is situated in rajasthan but now it will become second largest single location solar power project in the country act because the first will become gujarat and this will be the india's largest solar park to be built and ntpc renewable energy limited will produce green hydrogen 
remember green hydrogen we yesterday covered this question that green hydrogen mobility uh, park will be established in ladakh area yesterday we covered this question and ntpc renewable energy limited will produce green hydrogen on a commercial scale from this park and ntc ntpc also aims to build 60 gigawatt renewable energy capacity by 2032 we also covered this point so many times 60 gigawatt from wind and from uh, you can say solar so remember it is ntpc target and guys remember about ntpc organization ntpc was basically established in 1975 and its chairman and managing director is gurdeep singh you can remember this also so all the most important points we covered now we can move to the next question but you can also remember about gujarat uh gujarat chief minister is vijay rupani governor is acharya devrath and guys very important national parks are there gir national park is there marine national park is there that is again very important vansada national park is also there that is again very important wild ass century is also there again very important so these are the very very important national parks in uh, gujarat move into next question who is sworn in as the prime minister of nepal so again uh, one new prime minister sworn in nepal and he become the uh, fifth time prime minister of nepal and this person is sher bahadur deoba so you have to remember sher bahadur deoba 75 years old the president of nepali congress sworn in as the prime minister of nepal for the fifth time and he took over the office from the incumbent prime minister of nepal that was kp sharma oli it means the old prime minister of nepal was kp sharma oli i think all the students know this and the new prime minister will be the sher bahadur deoba and guys you can see here sher bahadur deoba takes oath as the nepal's prime minister for record fifth time fifth time we are talking and president of nepali congress you have to remember the name of the party that is nepali congress and uh, he became the prime minister of nepal for the fifth time so you have to remember this number also the five members constitutional bench of the supreme court of nepal led by chief justice uh, chalendra sushmer rana or shumsher rana appointed him as prime minister because it is the decision of the supreme court so no one can neglect this and uh, according to the constitution provision of the nepal sher bahadur deoba has to get a vote of confidence from the 275 member house of representative within 30 days or you can say within one month of his appointment as a prime minister so within one month he have to prove his vote of confidence and previously sher bahadur deoba has served as the prime minister of nepal for four times between 1995 to 2018 you can just remember the number that fifth time he was appointed as the prime minister of nepal and guys remember about nepal president is vidya devi bandari and capital is kathmandu and currency is nepalese rupee and guys you can remember other two options like you can see here neftali bennett he was recently appointed as prime minister of israel you have to remember this because this question will come definitely this question will come and isaac herzog become the president of israel move into next question which country started the construction of world's first commercial small modular uh, reactor named linglong 1 so the main keyword under this question that it is the world's first commercial small modular reactor you have to remember and its name is very important it is known as linglong 1 and the construction of this small modular reactor started by china so answer of this question is c and guys remember according to international energy international agency or the atomic energy agency uh these small reactors capacity comes under 300 megawatt electric so you remember the capacity which lies under the 300 megawatt electric or less than 300 megawatt electric that are known as the small modular reactor and if the capacity lies uh, in between 700 megawatt electric like 300 to 700 then they are known as the medium modular reactor so we are talking about small modular reactor and guys remember china started this construction of the world first commercial modular small reactor so this is the keyword for you and each unit of it has a power generating capacity of 125 megawatt and once completed it might increase up to 1 billion kilowatt hours thereby catering to more than 5 lakh households in china so this is very important thing and 
originally this project was aimed to uh, like started in 2017 but it was delayed due to the regulatory issues and this ling long one also known as acp 100 remember acp 100 and it was the first small modular reactor that was approved by the international atomic energy agency in 2016 it was approved by international agency in 2016 but uh, the construction started in 2021 earlier the projected construction uh, starting time period was 2017 but it was delayed due to the regulatory issues and guys this small modular reactor could minimize the consumption of fossil fuels in china definitely for the carbon neutral china and also could promote energy conservation and the carbon emission reduction because china plans to use this uh, small modular reactor to provide urban heating in the north area and run desalination facilities along the country's coastal line so china will use uh, this uh, small modular reactor for this purpose so you have to remember it will definitely uh, um, fulfill the carbon neutral China dream and guys you can also remember one organization here that we are talking about International Atomic Energy Agency because uh, this organization approved this project so that's why you have to remember this organization was established in 1957 year is not so much important you have to just remember the headquarter headquarter is in Vienna Vienna is in Austria Austria's capital is Vienna so you have to remember moving to next question which country will host Badminton World Federation World Badminton Championship in 2026. We are talking about 2026 and the hosting rights goes to India. So guys remember it is India. So two keywords are very important. One is the World Badminton Championship and the year is very important 2026 and hosting India. So guys you can see here India will host 2026 World Badminton Championship. And you can see here, this will be the second time that India will host this event after 2009 in Hyderabad, Telangana. Earlier, India hosted this event in 2009, but now India will host this event in 2026. And India was hosting country to organize the Total Energies uh, Badminton World Federation Sudirman Cup Finals 2023. Earlier, India uh, was host of this cup like Sudirman Cup Finals of 2023, but now this hosting right has been awarded to China. This hosting right has been awarded to China. Now 2023 Sudirman Cup final will be hosted by China, not by India. So this led to India's grabbing the opportunity for hosting uh, Badminton World Federation World Championship in 2026 because in 2023 it shifted to China. So guys remember 2021 uh, this cup Sudirman Cup final 2021 I am talking about was originally scheduled to be held in China but it is shifted to Finland so you don't have to remember otherwise you will uh, confuse this but you have to remember the Indian hosting rights 2026 and the name of the uh, or uh, name of the cup or you can say the tournament is badminton world federation world badminton championship and you can see here the chart uh, every year this will happen 2021 it will be hosted by Spain it means this year it will be hosted by Spain uh, next year it will be hosted by Japan in 2023 it will be hosted by Denmark but remember uh, in a summer Olympics year this game is not hosted so remember so in 2024 the summer Olympics are there in uh, you can say Paris so that's why uh, this tournament will not happen so in 2025 it will be hosted by France and in 2026 it will be hosted by India but the place is not yet final exact place is not yet final like in 2009 it was happened in Hyderabad but in 2026 exact place was not yet decided so you have to remember and guys remember this organization badminton world organization or the world federation this was established in 1934 but then the name was international badminton federation and uh, its total member countries are 196 and its headquarters is Kuala Lumpur. So remember Kuala Lumpur is capital of Malaysia. Moving to next question. All the most important questions we have covered and we are moving to very important question section but you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. By providing these three things you are basically motivating us. And guys remember you can join our telegram group from description box link. And here is the question. Polar biologist discovered new species of moss from which continent and it is named after India. So that is very good thing. That's why we are covering this question in the very important section that polar biolo biologist discovered new species of moss from which continent and it is named after India. And guys remember we are talking about polar biologist and if we are talking about continent and the continent polar continent here is Antarctica. So answer of this question is D. And guys, you can also see here the picture of species. 
this is the moss species which was discovered in antarctica and it is a new plant species named as bryum barthiensis bharat stands for india so that's why barthiensis so it is named after india and it is discovered in antarctica and named after india this is very important thing because it is named after india and polar biologist of which university you have to remember this university is central university of punjab so the polar biologist of this university discovered this new species which is known as bryum barthiensis a new native species of moss from antarctica so two or three things examiner can ask one is the name of the university who discovered this name of the species it is bryum barthiensis and it is a moss species and it is discovered in antarctica these four things are very important and guys remember uh, this bryum barthiensis is the first plant species discovered from antarctica during the indian antarctic mission indian antarctic mission and uh, the first indian antarctic mission was in 1981 and bryum barthiensis was uh, 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 confirmed as the new species of moss discovered for the first time in world and guys remember the species is named after india as a tribute to india and its antarctic station bharti and you have to remember india's bharti research station is situated in antarctica and india has two research station in antarctica one is the bharti which was commissioned in 2012 you have to remember and the first station was metri metri and it was commissioned in 1988 metri so there are two research stations or the research centers in antarctica from indian side one is the bharti second is the metri so remember these things these are very very important and we covered all the things move into next question national capital regional transport corporation which is also known as ncrtc ncrtc will implement which system in indian railways to digitally manage the real assets in simple words you can say that the national capital regional transport corporation started a new thing for the indian railways to digitize or the digitally manage rail assets and name of this project or the system is i dream so guys remember name of this system is i dream and you can also see here N ncrtc implementing i dreams which is also known as integrated real time enterprise asset management system ams stands for asset management system i stands for integrated and dre stands for that is uh, real time enterprise and this system will manage railway assets and you can see here it is known as integrated real time enterprise asset management system and i dreams provides digital solutions for the cost effective measures in the asset management and guys remember this will uh, remove the shortcomings in data handling thereby providing hassle free travel experience for customers uh, i dreams is basically a system designed to collect real time data from the sensors and other subsystem in the railways to provide data driven solutions for asset management and avoid upcoming risk and i dream will be used for improving the safety standards of the regional rapid transit system in trains and this will reduce the time taken to manually collect and input the asset data in the asset management system and also ensures to maintain a quality database so you have to just remember that uh, this i dream project will basically uh, digitize the railway system and will also provide the opportunity to handle the asset management uh, system in the railway and guys remember recent related news that mobile train radio communication which is also known as mtrc system also known as the global system for mobile communication railway was inaugurated in mumbai maharashtra so for the first time indian railway has commissioned this mtrc system an instant communication system used to avoid train accident it is for the train accident to avoid the train accident so guys remember this is mobile train radio communication and it is inaugurated in the mumbai maharashtra railway of mumbai maharashtra so this is again very important question so all the things are covered here i dreams covered and national capital regional transport corporation you don't have to remember this organization just remember that this organization started this i dream project and why this project is important it is for the asset management system of the uh, railway moving to next question what was the theme of third asean conference on the biodiversity in 2020 this is also known as acb 2020 acb stand for asean conference on biodiversity of 2020 and this is the fifth and the final session of this third asean conference on biodiversity in 2020 held in july 2021 and the main focus theme was towards 2050 living in harmony with nature so guys remember the name theme is towards 2050 living in harmony with nature 
and guys you can also see here post 2020 global biodiversity framework was also released under this meeting and implementation needs more resources so this is the uh, you can say the action targets uh, for 2030 which was uh, discussed under this convention so united nation convention on biological diversity secretariat released the first draft of the post 2020 global global biodiversity framework to guide actions worldwide through 2030 to preserve and protect nature so this uh, you can say uh, asean um, Convention on Biological Diversity represented a milestone for the member states of the ASEAN to implement the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. And the framework includes 21 action targets for 2030 to reduce the threats to biodiversity, especially the threats to biodiversity. And uh, it also uh, meet people needs through sustainable use and benefit sharing. And the draft also proposed goal to achieve by 2050. It means uh, the goals will be achieved till the year of 2050 and total 21 action targets are described by United Nations Conference on the Biological Diversity. And guys, remember uh, um, this 15th conference of the parties on the Convention of Biological Diversity, which is also known as the COP15, is scheduled to take place in the coming in China and it will be held in October 2021. Remember, United Nations Climate Change Conference is different. It is known as COP26. And it will be held in which country? It will be uh, hosted by United Kingdom. It is already basically hosted by United Kingdom. The first session was already hosted. And remember, 15th conference of the parties, it is also known as COP15. And it is Convention on Bio uh, Biological Biodiversity. And it is known as CBD COP15. And it will be hosted by China in October 2021. And uh, uh, it will involve uh, the development of this global uh, biodiversity framework of 2020 to 2050. This is the this will be the discussion uh, topic in the China. So you can also remember and guys remember about ASEAN. We are targeting here ASEAN and it is uh, you can say um, association of Southeast Asian nation and it is an economic union founded to promote intergovernmental cooperation between the Southeast Asian nations and total member countries are 10 total member countries are 10 like Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos. Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and the Vietnam. And ASEAN region occupies almost 3% of the earth land. And this organization was established in 1967, headquarters in Jakarta, and secretary general is H.E. Dato Lim. You can just remember H.E. Da Dato Lim. Full name is H.E. Dato Jim Lok Hoi. Next is uh, uh, chairman of 2021 or President of 2021 country is Brunei. We discussed this so many times. So guys, remember these things. Established in 1967, headquarters in Jakarta. President is Achi Dato Lim Lokhui. And uh, uh, the president country of 2021 is Brunei. Moving to next question. A book titled Urdu Poets and Writers, Gems of Deccan, authored by whom? A book titled Urdu Poets and Writers, Gems of Deccan, authored by whom? This is the full name. You have to just remember Urdu poets and writers. And the caption is Gems of the Deccan. This book is authored by J.S. Iftikhar. So you have to just remember the name of the author. Remember the name of the uh, book. And you can just remember the initials of this name of book. Urdu poets and writers. And you can see here, this is the cover page of the book. Urdu poets and writers, Gems of the Deccan. And it is written by J.S. Iftikhar. And guys, you can see here. M. Venkaya Naidu. That's why we are covering this question in the very important section because M. Venkaya Naidu, a vice president of India, received this book titled as Urdu Poets and Writers. And the book highlights the literature and cultural traditions of the Deccan religion and the region. So guys, you have to remember this because this book specially highlights, specially highlights and the features the life and works of the various eminent poets and the writers from the Deccan region or you can say the South India. And the book also traces the literature and cultural traditions from the time of Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah, who is the founder of Hyderabad, and till the present time. It means it traces the all the evidences related to literature and culture tradition when Hyderabad was established and now till date. So this is a book basically related to the culture and the literature. And guys, remember M. Venkaya Naidu also received two Telugu books. One is known as the Nalgonda Kathalu and it is uh, written by Malika Arjun and the second is the Manavottam Rama. It is authored by Satyakashi Bhargav. 
and the first book which is known as nalla gonda kathlu is published by aju publication you don't have to remember it is a children book that features rural folklore and the local stories and the second book that is known as manvottam rama uh, this book is uh, uh, basically related to the 16 qualities of the lord rama and uh, uh, this led to the worship him as an ideal human being so these are the six qualities of the lord ram so this is written by satyakashi bargav now we are moving to next question world food program in india and which state government establish a partnership to improve the public distribution system or you can say the targeted public distribution system so the important organization here is the world food program it is a food assistance branch of the united nation and it is a world's largest humanitarian organization the largest one focused on the uh, hunger and the food security this is the world food program in india and uh, the state government uh, is rajasthan guys so answer of this question is a rajasthan and the partnership will enhance the use of digitization data aggregation and performance dashboards for monitoring of the targeted public distribution system and guys you can see here it is world economic forum and uh, uh, world food program and it partners with the rajasthan to improve targeted public distribution system and it is to improve the targeted public distribution world largest food safety net scheme in the rajasthan because rajasthan covers nearly about 45 million beneficiaries under the national food security act 45 million guys this is huge population which is covered under the rajasthan 45 million beneficiaries under the national food security act of 2013 serve through a network of 26000 almost 26000 fair price shops it means the people get the rations uh from the 26000 ration shops under the targeted public distribution system and it helps to create digital dashboard of supply and food grains received by the beneficiaries for monitoring and evaluation of the targeted public distribution system so guys remember these things because these are very important because uh, uh they are providing um food to the million of people and they are basically focusing on the ending hunger and remember world food program headquarters is in rome that is in italy you can also remember this but you have to remember about rajasthan here rajasthan chief minister is ashok gehlot remember governor is kalraj mishra and guys remember very important national parks are there in rajasthan like you can see desert national park is there very famous ranthambore national park is there uh next is you can say sariska national park is there again very famous ranthambore next keoladeogana keoladeogana national park is there mukundara mukund dara national park that is also very famous and guys recently one tiger reserve was declared earlier this was the wildlife sanctuary which is ramgarh wildlife sanctuary but now it is a new tiger reserve of india and it is the 52nd tiger reserve we covered this question in the very important section you have to remember ramgarh tiger reserve is situated in rajasthan and it is declared as a new tiger reserve in rajasthan it is the 52nd tiger reserve of india remember this move into next question Union territory of Ladakh signed MOU with which state to turn the union territory organic by 2025 and i am giving you hint that this state was the first state of india who became the organic state first organic state of india and answer of this question is very simple it is sikkim so you can see here ladakh signs mou memorandum of understanding with the sikkim to turn the ladakh into the organic entity it means ladakh also want to become the organic union territory Ladakh administration signed a memorandum of understanding with Sikkim State Organic Certification Agency regarding the implementation of the two schemes one is the Prampragat Krishi Vikas Yojana it means you have to use the traditional methods for the agriculture and second is the Mission Organic Development Initiative and it is started in the Ladakh region and main objective is to convert ladakh into the certified organic union territory by the year of 2025 you have to remember the year examiner can ask especially the ladakh students you have to remember that uh, uh, we have to uh, make ladakh as a organic union territory by the year of 2025 and this union territory plans to achieve the organic status through three phases like in the first phase they will select 85 villages and it will be identified to convert 5000 hectare of land into the organic and in the second phase they will uh, select 82 villages and they will cover 10000 hectare of land which will be converted into the organic land and under the third phase they will select 79 villages and the remaining area will be covered so in the three phases they will cover the uh, uh, full union territory and uh, they will convert into the organic 
and remember sikkim was declared as the first 100% organic state in the world by the united nation food and agriculture organization and the state made all of its uh, farms organic by banning the use and sale of the chemical fertilizers and the pesticide in state so guys remember this is again most important question guys you can also remember about sikkim here chief minister of sikkim is prem singh tamang prem singh tamang and uh, governor is ganga prashad so remember ganga prashad is currently the uh, governor of the state move into next question who has honored with bks literary award for 2021 again we are talking about one award but it is not so much important that's why we are not covering under the most important question but it is very important so this award you can say named as bks bks literary award or it is also known as behrain kerliya समाजन अवार्ड और समाजम अवार्ड सो यू कैन रिमेंबर जस्ट माई प्रोनाउंसिएशन कैन बी रॉन्ग बहरीन केरलिया एंड समझम लिटरेरी अवार्ड ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड इट गोज टू वेरी फेमस जर्नलिस्ट नेम्ड एस ओम चेरी एन एन पिल्लाई सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओम चेरी एन एन पिल्लाई हेयर यू कैन सी हेयर इट इज फॉर हिज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द मलयालम लैंग्वेज एंड द लिटरेचर एंड मलयालम जर्नलिस्ट प्ले राइट और यू कैन से नॉवलिस्ट एंड पोएट Om Cheri and N Pillai have been honored with the Bahrain Kerala Literary Award for 2021, specially for his contribution in the Malayalam language and literature. You have to remember, he is a journalist of the Malayalam language, he is playwright, uh, playwright of the Malayalam language, novelist of the Malayalam language, and the poet of the Malayalam language. And N N Pillai hails from which state? By default, from the language you can guess that he belongs to Kerala. And the award constitutes a cash prize of fifty thousand rupees and a citation. So you have to just remember that this award is basically related to uh, Om Cheri N N Pillai, and uh, this is for two thousand twenty one. And Om Om Cheri N N Pillai belongs to Kerala state. By default, the language is Malayalam. Now we are moving to next question. Startup incubator T Hub. Remember, this is Hyderabad based startup in partnership with whom has launched a new program called AIC T Hub Foundation. so guys this is very important because this is a new type of the foundation specially uh, to innovate the startups in the health sector in the health sector and this is atal innovation mission of niti ayog remember atal innovation mission so t hub is hyderabad based based startup incubator and in partnership with niti ayog atal innovation mission launched a new program which is known as aic t hub foundation and you can also see here t hub it is the first state led uh, startup that is also known as t hub telangana hub and uh, atal innovation mission launched cohort for the health tech startup it is specially for the health tech startups and the program is launched with an aim to support a deep tech startups in the field of life science and the health sector a series of workshops will be conducted in the 3 months program in the 3 months program covering various sectors like financial planning lead generation uh, value proposition among others and it is a 3 month long foundation course which is conducted in collaboration with the various industrial and the education organization and this will also act as the forum towards exchange of ideas between the leading professionals from healthcare startups across the country who are already in the business of health sector so they will definitely uh, provide motivation and provide support to the new startups especially in the healthcare sector and guys remember atal innovation mission the most important thing about uh, the new director or the mission director of this uh, atal innovation mission new mission director is dr chintan vaishnav this is the most important question this question can come in sbi now we are moving to next question so all the most important question and the very important questions we covered now we are moving to the important question you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and guys please join our telegram group from the description box link and here is the question but this question is from picture like one organization which is known as interweave uh, consultancy partners with united nation women to implement women empowerment principles or it is also known as united nation wep WEP stands for Women Empowerment Principles. And guys, remember, Interweave Consultancy is a diversity consulting organization. Became partner with the United Nations Women or United Nations Entity for the Gender Equality and the Ladies Empowerment to implement the United Nations Women Empowerment Principles via corporates in India. And uh, the main goals are like high level corporate leadership. Uh, you can say treat all women and men fairly at work without discrimination. Employ health. 
वेलबींग एंड द सेफ्टी एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेनिंग फॉर करियर एडवांसमेंट सो दीज कैन बी अचीव थ्रू दिस प्रिंसिपल दैट इज यूनाइटेड नेशन वोमेन एम्पावरमेंट प्रिंसिपल्स एंड इंटरव्यू वट इज द वर्क ऑफ इंटरव्यू हेयर इंटरव्यू कंसल्टेंसी विल प्रोवाइड टेक्निकल सपोर्ट टू द कॉर्पोरेट टू इम्प्लीमेंट दीज प्रिंसिपल्स लाइक एम्प्लॉय हेल्थ हाई लेवल कॉर्पोरेट लीडरशिप ट्रीट ऑल वोमेन एंड मैन इन फेयरली एट वर्क विदाउट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेनिंग एंड करियर एडवांसमेंट and the implementation of this program uh, to all over the world is being funded by the european union it means fund will be provided by european union some principles are basically given by the united nation under the world or the women uh, in empowerment principle and these principles will be implemented by this organization interview very simple question now we are moving to next so these are one liner important point but first of all we have to change the color to red and here is the first line NMDC board approved the demerger of NMDC steel earlier they were merged uh, together but now uh, this uh, national mineral development corporation it is india's largest iron ore miner and uh, uh, the board has approved the scheme of arrangement for demerger demerger meant by uh, uh, you can say bifurcation between the two bodies and it is a uh, uh, national mineral development corporation and national mineral development corporation steel it is a fully owned subsidiary of this nmdc and under demerging the entire share capital of uh, national mineral development corporation steel limited held by the nmdc limited would be cancelled and new equity share would be issued to all stakeholders of nmdc limited in the same proportion so it is cancelled earlier the merger was approved but now it is cancelled next haryana chief minister manohar lal khatter ji unveiled book untold stories of haryana police so it is related to haryana police and it is launched by the chief minister of haryana and uh, uh, you can also remember that according to haryana government 49 police martyrs who passed away due to the pandemic and this book is the tribute to these 49 police martyrs who passed away due to the pandemic and the book ex exhibits the brave work of the officers and the men of haryana police during covid 19 in 2020 so this is this book is basically dedicated to that uh, police personnel and the book also explains the operation samvedana you have to remember this operation samvedana operation samvedana was started by haryana government it is a drive started by haryana police department for sending back the migrant workers and the laborers during the lockdown to their home states and according to haryana government they uh, sent 4 lakh migrant workers under this drive and remember the chief minister is manohar lal khatter and the new governor of this state is bandaru datatreya bandaru datatreya who was earlier the governor of himachal pradesh next china india trade crossed usd 57 billion in the first half of the 2021 it means we are talking about january to june time period despite disturbed bilateral ties like the military and the covid 19 you can say and as per the data released by the china journal administration of the customs the china and india bilateral trade under the first half from january to june 2021 increased by 62.7% 62.7% and uh, even you can say that despite the stand off between the two countries militaries at eastern ladakh area and the dokla mishu and so many things but you have to remember india export to china is also increase export to china is also increased like 69% it is increased and uh, india's import from china is also increased like 60% it is increased so you can say this is the official data of the china general administration next babar azam become the fastest cricket to score 14 odi centuries earlier this record was with the hashim amla Uh, i think you know the uh, name and uh, you know the player hashim amla belongs to south africa he achieved this 14 odi centuries in the 84 innings hashim amla and but now we are talking about babar azam very famous pakistan cricketer and he achieved this 14 odi centuries in 81 matches or the 81 innings you can say 81 innings so this is the you can say the fastest cricketer to score 14 odi centuries and virat kohli took 103 innings to achieve this 14 odi centuries but you have to remember the highest number of centuries held by god um, um god of cricket you know sachin tendulkar like 49 centuries and uh, followed by virat kohli virat kohli has 43 i think he will break the record of sachin tendulkar but first is first next two new spider species discovered in assam cherang reserve forest you have to just remember new spider species were discovered in the assam area and it is in cherang reserve forest so cherang reserve forest is in which state it is in uh, you can say um, assam area next is external affairs minister s jay shankar visited russia 
uh, for three days like seven to nine and Georgia from nine to ten it means two days so uh, external affairs minister discusses nuclear space and defense cooperation with the Russian counterpart and India and Russia this question is very important India and Russia will hold two plus two dialogue two plus two stands for it is a dialogue between the foreign ministers and the defense ministers as per mutual convenience in 2021 and this dialogue will be uh, on the same pattern as with the United States of America because India also uh, uh, holding this dialogue with the United States of America. Now it is with Russia and external affairs minister unveiled the statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Georgia. You have to remember he unveiled the statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Georgia. But you have to remember about Russia. Russia's capital is Moscow guys and uh, currency is ruble and uh, Georgia. Georgia capital is Tbilisi. I am writing here Tbilisi and uh, uh, currency is lari and uh, georgian lari move into next it is the question of the day what was the question of 14th of july 2021 very simple question what do we call the instruments of monetary policy which directly affect the quantity of the money supply it means i am talking about crr i am talking about slr repo rate reserve repo rate reverse repo rate bank rate so these are known as the quantitative instruments so guys remember answer of this question is a and uh, if we are talking about qualitative instruments like rationing of the credit, these are known as the qualitative instrument. But you have to remember these are known as quantitative. Move on to next question. It is the question of the day. And it is again very simple. Opening of maximum of ATM is an example of which of the following? Maximum to maximum ATMs we have to open. And this is known as what? So you have to tell me answer only in the comment box. I'm waiting your answer. So guys, please like this video, please share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel by providing these three things. You are basically supporting us and you are basically motivating us. And please press this bell button and join our telegram group for the official notifications and it is a various cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely. And you can subscribe our PDFs from uh, the from our application application downloading link is given in the description box and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see the price you will definitely surprise and on that minimum price we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. And guys, don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy. Thank you guys. Take care and bye-bye.